Well, good morning. You will have noticed that yesterday was the second Saturday that I did not post a slow Saturday video. It's quite amazing to me how routines change when you move from one place to another. When we were in the small little town, I hardly ever went to the shops. I don't know. I just never went. And um, I usually filmed on a Saturday morning when my husband was out. And since we've moved to Pretoria now, on a Saturday, I trot around with him because it's absolutely enjoyable and um, I love spending the time with him. So Saturdays are just no longer working out. So I decided let's change it to a slow Sunday instead. But I'm going to do it every second week. Because I'm working full time now, I'm not spending as much time as I used to knitting and crocheting and doing new designs. So the results come a little bit slower. So I think every second Sunday is a better bet. So let's do every second Sunday a slow Sunday. Right, so what have I done in these two weeks? Well, I got more of that yarn, believe it or not. I couldn't help myself. Quite interesting. Um, uh, the Plain Jane V pattern that I published, was it this week? I think it was this week or the previous week. Mm, I don't know. The Plain Jane V is a v-neck with no fancy stitch patterns other than there's nothing. There's a ribbing at the neck and then you have two choices. You can either do ribbing at the bottom of the body and the sleeves or you can do a turn up seam. I prefer the turn up seam. And the photo that I've posted with the pattern is a lovely blue, green, soft, lilac-y color. And that one has gone to my daughter. So she will still send me more photos this week. But that meant that I didn't have a v-neck for myself. And I thought I wouldn't like it. I really thought I wouldn't like it, but when I fitted it for one photo, I really, really liked it. So I decided, let me first stop the designing and make myself one of those V-necks because yeah, I just had to have one. So I dipped into my stash of um, this Camilla Batik yarn, and here she is. She's not finished yet. I finished knitting last night. I haven't um, woven away the tails, so I'm going to do that today. Um, but there she is. I love the colors. I really do. So yeah, this one is also plain Jane v-neck. And when she's done, I'm going to start with a plain Jane crew neck. Because there's a lot of people that, well, I'm one of them. I like plain knitting. Yeah, I can do cables. I can do fair isle. I can do brioche. I can do intoja. I've done all of that. Um... I'm just knitting so nicely in front of the TV lately, sitting, chatting with my husband, watching a TV show, watching sport and whatever. So I'm really enjoying the plain stocking stitch knitting. And especially for newbies who've never knitted a garment in their life, the plain Jane is a very good place to start because you will get the basic concepts and it's so easy to adapt this pattern to something else. I mean, if you want to make a winter's pullover with this, you just buy merino instead of cotton and you make long sleeves. It's, it's so easy. Instead of stopping here, you can just carry on and decrease the sleeve a little bit more. And even that is in there for you. So um, the pattern is really worth buying. For $5, you can do anything with this. So um, I can't wait. I'm going to wear this on Tuesday. On Tuesday, she's going to work because on Tuesdays, I go to Santa. So guess what I'm wearing on Tuesday? My mother always made fun of me. She was Afrikaans and she said, Fani akani khat, which means it came off the, the hook or off the needles and it's already on your bottom. True that. Okay, so I want to make the crew neck next. Now, I have four, believe it or not, Oh, <laughs> of these Camilla Batik yarns still that I want to do. Um, I haven't decided which one I'm going to use for the crew neck. I'm probably going to go for this one. I must admit this one is actually my favorite. Now, uh, earlier this week I had a discussion with my testers about this yarn and um, I suddenly I remembered that I had worked with this yarn before, 
I have. I just couldn't remember where. And I was thinking and rattling my brains and trying to figure out where have I worked with this yarn before. And I remember that I got five balls as a gift from a from a buyer at that stage. She was one of my clients at Yana and Barn. She used to come and we used to sit and chat for hours and she always brought sweets for me. Her name is Monica Sneeman. Monica Sneeman gifted me five balls. And I knew I had crocheted with it, but I couldn't remember what. I really had to rack my brain. And in discussing with my testers, I found the one photo uh, when I went looking through all my old photos of a top that I made for a magazine that was the magazine that went down in 2020 when lockdown started and I posted the photo and I said I made this top with it and the one tester said to me yeah but there was another top that you made on this pattern it was a pink one and I thought huh back to the photos looking for it again and I found the photo it was actually a design that I made and I gifted it to my then mother-in-law. Um, yeah. But yeah, I have worked with Kamala Batik before. Um, okay, so I've got this one. This is my colors. Look, if you look at my glasses and you look at this, you can see this is my colors. I like this. It's got pink and purple and blue and yellow and lime green and orange. It's really a delightful blend of colors. So I've got this one. And then I have that one that makes me think of a sunset, but the white spoils the sunset a little bit. But yeah, it's in there. It's it's beautiful. It's yellow and orange and red and purple, and then this whitish color. And then I have the one that I've showed you before. It's pinks and grays. And then there's a new one that I got that's a very pastely pink, pastely purple with a little bit of natural in there as well. So one of these will become a crew neck, plain Jane, and then I'll, I'll see what happens to the rest. But Moya has sent me some yarn for that lace top that I want to make. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next. Probably the plain plain Jane crew neck because that's for, foremost in my head. And then I'll start with the lace probably after that. I don't know. But I'll have to get something nice to knit on the road. We're going down to Cape Town in um, December, just after Christmas. We're going to take a drive down to Cape Town. So I need to have nice knitting for the road as well. So it probably won't be the lace top thing because in the car, I don't want to make notes and I don't want to read notes. I just want to knit happily in the round. So this is the shimmer that they dyed for me. They call it Phoenix. It's like a, oh, how do we describe this? It's like, it makes me think of wine, but it's not as deep as wine. It's this dark rose. Yeah, rose is a good way to put it. I don't know. It's, it's beautiful. I can't wait to start working with it. Shimmer is my favorite Moya yarn. To knit with it knits up especially beautifully and it's got this lovely drape it's perfect for a summer top so this is what is now in my lineup five five tops <laughs> it's five summer tops and i want to challenge myself and see if i can uh, if i can finish five summer tops before the winter comes for winter i've got nice yarns lined up you will remember from last year i've got um merino and kit silk from color spun still waiting for me i've got mohair still waiting for me i've got that air and cotton and kit silk combo that that i had last year with let's talk purple that's still waiting for me i think there's a cherry red and there's a emerald green and there's a turquoise mohair And I'm positively convinced there's harmony in there somewhere. Oh, that was for my husband. I've got harmony for my husband in there somewhere. And I can't remember what else. Yeah, but that's that's the winter knitting. So in South Africa, we're still on a summer streak. It's high summer here. It's getting hotter by the day. 
So it's all about summer tops at the moment, and I have five lined up. Right. Before I go, I want to give you a good um, gift idea for Christmas. I've been walking around with this idea in my head. You will remember that in the previous podcasts, we spoke a lot about the people that are dying around us. And my husband and I have been to some funerals and we've watched some funerals. And I remember when a friend of mine died, I think it was 2012. Oh, it's, it's a couple of years ago. At her funeral, um, they actually threw open the floor and they said, anybody that want to come forward, that want to say something about her or tell about the impact that she's had on their lives are welcome to come up and, and tell the people about it. And many people did. And we went to a funeral of my husband's uncle and his son did the same thing. He didn't throw the floor open to other people, but he read little letters that people wrote of the impact that this man had on their lives. And it was so beautiful to hear. And then um, we started speaking about funerals. It's, I, I don't know if it's normal, but it's this time in our lives where we've realized that we now become the elders. We... There's no longer a generation really older than us, not for us anyway. Um, and one of the things that we discussed was that if, if I have a funeral, I want that. I don't want to have, if I die, uh, have a life celebration somewhere in a nice restaurant where people can have a beer on me. <laughs> and... Tell the other people things about me that maybe they don't know. Maybe they never thought of. And then my mind started wandering further with this thing. Why are we waiting for somebody to die before we say these things? Why don't we say it to them while they're alive? Why don't we go and say, you know what impact you had in my life back then when this and this and this happened, you did this and this and that, and it made me feel this and this and this, because that person will appreciate it when you tell them to them, when you tell it to them while they're alive. Why do we wait until somebody's dead before we say these beautiful things? And as if I've been waiting for a confirmation, which I didn't, a friend of mine sent me a WhatsApp this week. It's a former client of mine in the town where we used to live. I used to treat her and her mother. And she said to me, I don't think my mother has a lot of time left. For Christmas this year, I want to give her a box. And in the box must be little notes and little letters from people telling her what she means to them. And I said to her, you know what? I've been on that same trail of thought now for weeks, weeks. And I immediately wrote the little letter to her mother because she's an adorable old lady. I really love her to bits. So maybe this year, instead of buying expensive Christmas presents, maybe we must write letters to each other and say what you mean to me, what impact you've had in my life. I think it will be so much more special to tell it to the person or to give the letter to the person while the person is still alive, rather than waiting for a funeral to happen. Let's make life special for each other this year. Not with expensive gifts, but with thoughtful conversations, letters if it must. Yeah, so I'll see you in two weeks. Maybe then I'll have something else to show you, or at least half a project then I'll see. It will probably be half a one. I don't think I'm going to get it finished in two weeks, but anyway. So I'll see you in two weeks for another Slow Sunday. Have a great Sunday, and um, enjoy your week. Have a blessed one. May everything go according to plan, and may you have special times with special people.